<laughs> You're good. You can go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so a resultant of two vectors is the sum of two or more vectors. Okay. And uh, geometrically, here's kind of what it would look like. So I got vector r, I got vector r, and I got vector s. If I said find the resultant of vector r plus vector s, what that means you would do is, let's say here's our starting point, draw vector r, then from there draw vector s, and the resultant, the, the answer, the result, or what would happen, is this vector right there in red. Okay? That would be the vector r plus s. That would be your resultant. That would be the outcome of those two forces acting on that object. It wouldn't matter which vector you wanted to add for or draw first, okay? We're still adding vectors r and s together, but if you would have drawn vector s, so here's our starting point, if you would draw vector s first, and then from there draw vector r once you end up in the same spot, Yeah. okay? Yeah. So it wouldn't matter which one you draw first. Okay, it's just like with numbers. If you go 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3, you're going to get the same answer. Vectors are the same way geometrically. It doesn't matter which one you draw first. Sometimes it can be easier to draw one first versus the other one. Okay? But this would be your resultant. That would be the sum of those two vectors acting on the same object at the same time. Another way to think about it. Okay? Here's our object we're going to apply a force to, okay? Listen carefully to this. Vector R, let's say that's going to be the force that somebody is putting on this chair. So let's say you're, you're looking down, okay, from the sky at this chair. That's going to be the force. So someone's going to be pushing roughly about right here in this direction, okay? Kind of up and to the right. Imagine, you're, you're sitting way up here, you're looking straight down at this chair. Okay, so the, this vector is being pushed up and to the right, correct? So it's like somebody's going to be pushing the chair in this direction at a pretty good force. At the same time, someone's going to be pushing up and to the left on this chair. So it's like i got two people pushing the chair. So one's pushing like this, and the other one's probably going to be pushing about like this. Okay, so i got two forces acting on it. Now obviously this one is a larger force because the magnitude is more, right? The length is more. Okay. If I if those two people push on this chair at the same time, okay. Here's kind of the key, so you understand this. Okay. If this is where the chair started, and they push on the chair at the same time, what's the chair going to do? To the right and to up to the left. Which path would it take? The red line. The red line. That's what will happen. Okay? If I tell those two people to push on that chair at the same time, this is the resultant. That's what would happen. Okay? Because it's not just going to go the direction that this person is pushing, because at the same time they're pushing, this person is pushing that way, so this red, the resultant, that would be the path that the chair would actually move. Does that make sense? You guys follow that? Okay? So that's the whole idea of a resultant. A resultant is what would happen if those two forces acted at the same time. Isn't that it because that R has more magnitude? What now? In the end, it still moved to the right, yes, because R had more, more magnitude and more force. If person R is the only person that pushed on the chair, then what would the chair do? Go there. Oh. 
Okay? But I'm saying we're going to push on this chair at the same time. Someone's going to be pushing it this way, someone's going to be pushing it that way. Because person R is pushing with a little more force, the chair is still going to go more to the right, but not as far right as it would as if nobody else was pushing on. Does that make sense? Okay? So you kind of get the idea geometrically. Everybody good with that? Okay. Uh, so we'll be drawing a lot of pictures to represent different situations there. All right, we'll start with something easy. Here's our, here's our story problem. Suppose you tried to swim five miles per hour due west. Suppose you tried to swim five miles per hour due west across a river with a current of two miles per hour south. Draw a detailed picture of this situation and then find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. Okay? This sort of question is on your test. Okay? So I'd make sure I'd get this down in your notes. Can't wait till there's complaints about it. Suppose you tried to swim five miles per hour due west across a river with a current of two miles per hour south. Draw a detailed picture of the situation and then find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. Okay? So, all right, there's our river. You're going to try to swim five miles per hour due west. Okay. Obviously, you must be on the east side. Here's our river from north to south. Okay, I wouldn't. So here's our river. Okay. We must be sitting over here. Okay. And we're going to try to swim due west at five, let's say miles or kilometers. Okay. So I'm going to try to go due west at five miles per hour. Okay, that's what I'm going to try to do. But at the same time I'm trying to swim due west, the current is pushing me to the south at 2 miles per hour. So then from here, from the tip of this arrow, if I want to find the resultant, I've got to draw the other force that's acting at the same time. And that's the force of the current. So the current is going to be pushing me south at 2 miles per hour. So then this right here, that is what's actually going to end up happening. Okay? Unless you compensate for the current, which we get into problems like that eventually too. Okay? But... If you just take off, you don't try and compensate, and you just try to go straight west across that river, okay, you're obviously not going to make it straight across. You're going to end up downstream a little bit, right? Because the current's going to push you downstream. Now, I'm not getting really detailed into this problem yet, but all it says is draw a detailed picture of the situation. <clears throat> so far, so good. And then find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. So now we just got to find the magnitude and resultant, excuse me, magnitude and direction <coughs> of that red vector. That should be easy. Okay? How will you find the magnitude? Pythagorean's theorem. How will you find the direction? Inverse tangent. Okay? Now, if you would like a coordinate plane, what you should do, Ben? 
think of that coordinate plane as being right there. Yeah, and just start at the... That's where you started. Make the origin wherever it is in your picture that you're starting from. That might help but you. But you can still do it this way, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah that might be easier because I was trying to think how you do a coordinate plane. Yep. Nope. If you do a coordinate plane, just make sure you make your origin be wherever you're saying you're starting from. Okay? So, Pythagorean theorem, 5 squared plus 2 squared equals I don't know squared. We actually did that one earlier today. I had the same two numbers, but roughly we got 5.4 miles per hour, right? Everybody go to that? Yep. Okay. So I got 5.4 miles per hour. Okay. Now, if we do inverse tangent of 2 over 5, that'd be 21.8. So this person will end up swimming. If they don't try to adjust for the current, they will end up swimming 5.4 miles per hour at 21.8 degrees what? South of west. Make with the degree, I mean, with the number, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay? So 5.4 miles per hour at 21.8 degrees south of west. That'll be the actual path that this swimmer ends up traveling. Okay? Questions on that? If you don't swim at a constant speed, then we're getting into much more complicated physics problems. Uh, We're going to assume go. constant speed. What if I'm not that slow? Okay. You are. Oh, God. You haven't seen me in the pool? All right, pause probably. <laughs>